Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. Super excited to have longtime friend, longtime client, Byron Lazine in the house. Uh, I would describe him as a real estate renaissance man, meaning, you know, he's just not myopic. He's, he's running a team in two states. He's an entrepreneur. He's got multiple businesses. He is a podcaster. He's a content creating machine. And he's a masterminder with all kinds of great agents. So he sees the world differently. So Byron, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me back. I believe it's the second time. So second I'm really, time. really appreciative of, of the opportunity to you. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So I thought, well, you know, thinking about our audience and who's listening to this, I actually just wrote down lessons from the trenches. I want to talk about team scaling. I want to talk about podcasts and content creation. I want to talk about working in two states, right? You know, sort of, you know, here we are as we're filming this, we are almost at one year since the lockdown. So I think you're not the only person that's done the two state thing. So I want to get into that. I want to talk about tech stack. I want to talk about marketing that works. And then I want to get into the future of real estate because you and I uh, have some similar opinions and thoughts around what's going to happen in the future. So for the people that don't know you, maybe just take a minute and just give them a little context for who you are, what you do, what you're all about. Yeah. Like from the beginning or just right now where we are, are at right now. Yeah. Let's go from right now. Okay. Yeah. Right now running a, a team, which has been accelerating in our growth in, in terms of who we're bringing on, who we can help in their career path. You know, Lisa Chinati, who has been on your podcast and uh, she really kicked my butt into gear last year. I mean, we we're having a great year, but she said, Byron, it's time for you to stop being so vulnerable to low numbers, meaning low numbers of, of agents on the team. Yeah. And I agreed with her, not just uh, for me personally, but for their business as well. Our ability to grow depends on adding great people around them, continuing to feed our new agent program so that the experienced agents have the benefit of us going out and getting more channel accounts, of us taking more market share, That's of right. us putting billboards up like we did for the first time in quarter, uh, actually starting this this month in March so uh, of this year. So yeah, my, my number one goal is operating and recruiting to a specific number this year, the, the Connecticut team and, and continuing to help people grow there. We, I also have a media company, which we produce all of our own content, as well as other teams and a builder, builder association in Connecticut. And then my uh, brokerage, William Ravis, we've got some pretty cool products coming very soon there as well. And, and then I'm in the infancy here. I'm sitting in Naples, Florida uh, of what I'm going to be starting down here. Nice, man. So again, as I, as I said in the beginning, you had a lot going on. So, so let's, let's go back to you and big shout out to Lisa Chinati and the conversation around, Hey man, it's time to scale. It's time to stop playing small. Like there's probably somebody listening to this right now that, that Byron, like they've been hearing me, you know, stomp speech, scale team since like 2015, right? Like when I really came out and said, Hey, these are the big seven things that we got to pay attention to teams are going to dominate the world. And eventually teams are going to start selling, which we certainly know they have the last five years. What do you say to that person that is like in, in their heart of hearts, they know they should, but they're just resistant. Maybe as you were, as Lisa called you out. Yeah. And, and it's not even that I was, I guess, resistant. I don't think I was ready because I didn't take the actions necessary to scale the team. And I was kind of stuck in the middle. And, and I, I'm going to say something that's going to be controversial. I think the middle in real estate is absolutely dead. That in includes solo, solo agents that aren't building a staff around them. I want to be very clear on that. I think the person that advertises themselves as an individual agent that gets awards as an individual agent is here to stay for a long time, right. but that individual is going to have a staff around them. So you can yeah. call that a team or you can, you know, some of these mega teams that like what we're doing, growing and scaling our numbers, everything in the middle, the collection of two or three agents that don't have systems and operations down and staffing is dead. The totally single agent just relying on themselves and the 15 hats that you have to wear in this industry is dead. Uh, Zillow's kind of cutting that middle of, of the industry out. You've got to be really good and scaled on the team side, or you've got to be what you used to call the SEAL team, right? right. I think the SEAL right. team is now the individual agent with employees. Yeah, Those are the two ends of the spectrum that you, you've got to kind of start leaning into. So there's a lot to unpack there and, and you and I are aligned in, in so many ways. I, I think a lot about the 
Amazon versus say Shopify, right? So, so you've got these Amazonian esque businesses in our space and you could look at that and say, that could be Zillow. That could be realtor.com. That could also be Realogy. That could be Berkshire Hathaway, like these behemoth companies. I, I agree with you that, you know, the end of the single agent, if they don't have people around them, I just don't know if, I just don't know if it's going to play out as quickly as we think. I think that could be seven to 10 years from now because the heart and soul of real estate right now is still that hyper local person. You know, it's Susie, it's Billy, it's Jose, it's, it's, you know, Martha selling a house someplace with the support of their brokerage. Yeah. Right? And on the, on the flip side of that, you see open door saying we want seamless online right. transactions and Zillow saying the same thing. And these are all buzzwords because right. to your point, these seamless end to end online transactions have not happened without the help of great agents. Exactly. But I would argue, uh, you know, that, you know, if you're but going think about it before, before you argue, think about, think about how Shopify has, has been the counter move for people selling shirts on Instagram, people selling their whatever on Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. So, so, you know, when everybody was like, was it Walmart that outsourced all of their online shopping at first to Amazon and then quickly went, that's a bad idea and then created their own strategy. Um, I think shop, I think there's going to be room for a Shopify esque company in real estate that comes in and totally empowers the individual agent. And whether that is the ultimate tech stack on our phone that does it all right. 24 seven with AI and with a virtual assistant or Alexa as my virtual assistant that's been downloaded to do everything for me. I, I'm, I'm super bullish still on the individual and yet I'm the biggest advocate for teams. It's kind of, I'm, I, and, I, and I'm with you on that, right? Because one of the reasons I'm with William Ravis, which is, you know, one of the largest independent owned brokerages you, in the country yep. is because they're doing just that, right? They're, they're enabling the single agent to still be successful. When right. you look at the vast majority of single agents right now in this country, they don't have the kind of support that really operates like a team that you're talking about. Yeah. And, and just because, you know, I'm always, and, and this is my fault here too, because the way I framed that up, probably a bunch of people looking in probably didn't, um, you know, did not want to, to hear what I had to say. They probably uh, were like, what the heck is wrong with this guy, right? What, what is he talking about? Uh, here's the thing. When I'm thinking about it from the entrepreneur mindset of being really successful in this business, being indestructible to any right. disruptor, that's right. the mindset you have to have. I think you've got to go extreme to one end or the other. If you're thinking about this 10, 20, 30 years to your point, because yeah, in 2022 is much going to be different than 21. Likely no. No. No, but you're, you and I are aligned hundred percent on, there's no doubt if you, if you actually, if you're listening to this right now and you're like, Oh my God, he's talking about like maybe the end of me as an agent. No, it's, it's not that what you're missing is it's the consumer experience. All of this, at least for me is centered in give the customer what they want. Like I, I, I had some fun the other day. I was on the golf course with a couple of friends and I said, when was the last time you bought a house? And all of them had bought a home in the last like two or three years. And I said, okay, tell me about the experience. And they all said, absolutely horrible, hated every minute of it. And then I said, well, wait a minute. What about the agent? Oh no, 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 no. Loved my agent. My agent was the godsend of the whole thing. Like if it wasn't for the agent, like the agent comes to my house for dinner, we're pals now. It was everything else in the real estate experience that I hated. Thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, you see company, you know, Compass uh, had to disclose their acquisitions recently, right? right? And you saw that they purchased in the, I believe the last six months, two different closing services, two different companies that yeah. handle closings. Right. That, I mean, that yeah. whole side of the thing is really messy for a lot of consumers. Just yeah. the communication from agent to lend, lender to title company or attorney, right. whatever you use, it's really, and that puts the stress on the consumer because there's not a really good flow of how the, all the information is being communicated. There's a lot of areas to clean up. Uh, so I, I agree that there's the good agents, even the good solo agents and, right. and the good teams, they're providing a tremendous amount of value to their clients 
And the, the really good ones are keeping that relationship going so that they're getting referrals directly from their network as right. opposed to receiving all of their leads from Zillow or Realtor or whoever. Yep. But there are still a lot of frustrating, stressful parts of every transaction because there's so many elements to it. So yes. there's there's room for, for cleaning up everywhere in, in this industry. I, I concur a thousand percent. You know, for, for me in my 31 years, I can remember very early on saying, why aren't there standards? Like, you know, you, not everybody should be able to play. Do you know what I mean? Like in the world of sports, like, hey, you got to be a gamer if you want to play. And I remember saying that to, uh, to a mentor of mine, and he said, well, you're forgetting that NAR and state associations are all predicated on dues. So um, I was looking at some numbers recently. So for my friends out there listening, don't, don't quote me exactly on this because I got it from a reliable source, but we all know data can always, it's, it's kind of the old line. If you, if you attack the data long enough, it's going to tell you what you want to hear. Um, the piece I was looking at that I thought was interesting, it was about 60% of the 1.5 million agents in the U.S. had done transactions which means that 40% hadn't. So here we are in the single hottest real estate market I've seen in 31 years, single hottest market ever, one could argue, and 40% of the people haven't done a transaction, right? What's interesting is I bifurcate the other two, in the ones that are doing deals, like to stuck or scaling. Stuck or scaling. The stuck people, they're selling houses, Byron, but they've run out of time right? Time is the resource that they haven't figured out how to multiply where people like yourself and so many others that we know have scaled to, to work towards the highest and best use of their time. They're still in the weeds. They're still in the trenches. They're still doing things that maybe they shouldn't, or they know they have to do, or maybe their ego holds on to only I can do this with the client, but at least they're scaling. Give me some insight on the people that are stuck, the good agents, right? Some, Hey, by the way, some of them have an assistant. Some of them have a marketing director. Some of them have two showing agents, but they're still stuck. They're out of time. What do you say to that group? That's an easy one. That that's staying within your own little bubble way too often. The amount, I mean, you brought up the mastermind that I'm in earlier, not only just having a mastermind, because that's just one layer of accountability, having a weekly or a daily accountability partner, having an accountability group within your office. Our team has been doing accountability right. groups every single Friday for on these six week sessions over and over and over and over again, having a coach is a really good idea. Even I, you know, I shot a, an Instagram reel recently and I said, if you can afford it, this is, you know, what you should be doing leading up. If you're in real estate school right now, if you're in school, you don't even have your license. Yep. If you can afford it while you're in school, get the coach before you even have the license. Right. Right. So I've got all I've, I've built all these layers around my business of people continuing to push me forward every single day. And I've been with, you know, I've been with TF coaching for I don't know how many years. Right. And yeah. it, it continues going to going on like eight. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It yeah. continues to introduce me to more layers of accountability. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I think you've got to look inward on, OK, how accountable am I really being? to other people. My wife's an accountability partner, our vision board's an accountability partner. I've got over 10 layers of accountability in my business every single day. So when you're stuck, you need something to push you out of the mud. Right, right. So there's a lot to unpack there too, but I wanna, I wanna ask the question that someone is asking right now in their head. What is that six week accountability thing you're doing with your team? like? How do you hold independent contractors accountable? Like, what does that look like? Kind of break down the mechanics of it because someone right now is going, you know what? He's right. It's no different if I want to lose weight, you sign up and you're in a group, right? You go to fat camp, you sign up for Jenny Craig, you know, whatever, whatever it is, everybody performs better when they've got some accountability around them. So unpack for us sort of tactically, what does that team accountability look like? Listen, our top producers, you know, we've got agents doing over 15 million a year. And those top producers are in the accountability sessions, every single group. So we keep putting these six week groups out there completely optional. Yeah. Your free will to join yeah. them. Yep. And you're getting an accountability partner every single week. You're declaring exactly what your commitments are going to be for that week. Yep. And some people have, hey, I've got a six week commitment. Uh, some people have, you know, just a week to week commitment, health, personal, mental. I mean, right. people ha have caught up on taxes in this group. People have 
like, you know, quit doing, you know, bad, really bad personal health habits, yep. lost weight. I mean, there's been some real needle movers for people's personal lives, not just their business. Right. Yeah. And so the way you do that, if you're, I mean, if you're talking about that stuck agent, that's maybe a solo agent and maybe they only have, you know, two people working with them, uh, an admin or, or whatever the case may be, start to, you know, put this together on zoom, right? Like everything is on zoom right. through the people that, you know, if you're in a coaching, you know, if you're in Tom Ferry ecosystem, you know, I'm certain you could grab 10 to 12 people. That's kind of what we found. It's, it, you know, 10 or 12 yeah. people's kind of a good number for these. We're doing them all still on zoom or, you know, we're not doing them in the office and they go, you know, half hour on Fridays, 1130 to 12. Sometimes we go a little bit over if we're going, going really deep, but if you're also somebody that's just realizing that maybe you're not in the right environment every single day and your business, it's like when we talk to a seller, right? That, that wants, to, wants to list with Redfin for one and a half percent. How much more money could you net being right. in the right organization, being on the right team to the, to the bottom line? What's, what's your 1099 say for you yeah. at the end of the year? So yep. don't use pride if you're not willing to kind of go out and build this whole business. If there's people that already have uh, this layer of accountability for you and, and that culture is something you need and you know you need it, I'd go out and find it. Yeah. I was uh, having a conversation with Jason Mitchell, who uh, is now in 18 states, uh, his, his team, 5,500 transactions last year. And we were talking about just, you know, values and just business, super, you know, super great guy. And, uh, and, you know, one of them is like, look, you know, we just have to create, I use the phrase guardrails, right? You've heard me talk about that before. Kind of like for the person listening right now, if you've ever taken your kids to like to a bowling alley, remember we used to actually go to bowling alleys. And if you had it, it was fun. Like they could put up these little guardrails so the ball never went in the gutter and everybody was able to knock down a few pins, right? And, and he and I were basically just in that dialogue. Like it's so important just to have a culture of accountability, that we actually hold people to their word. And to your point, it's, hey, you want to be a part of it or not? And what you see is the best always gravitate towards it. So, so let's go back. I want, to, I want to go back into the team thing. By the way, 5,500 transactions. This is what I love about this ecosystem, right? right. I, right. I feel really small right now, <laughs> you know? And so and like we had, we had number one transactions for our entire brokerage last year. We did over 100 million. We had yeah. a great year. But if we just keep resting on those laurels and not really yeah. look what's ahead to the people, the amazing people in this ecosystem, right. uh, I'm not getting better. Right. I love hearing that 5,500 right. transactions. Right. And he's, you know, the, the fun part is, uh, you know, he is him, George, some, some of the people that I'm, I'm blessed to talk to all the time, you know, 3,100 transactions for George and his team. He's got like 200 salespeople on his team. He's not a broker. He's like you, he's inside of a brokerage and just said, Hey, Let's go for it. And he's got a broker that's like, hey, I trust you. Let's go, right? That, so That's a yeah. big thing if you're building a team, having a broker that supports you. Big time, big time. You are blessed. I mean, Bill Ravis has been a friend for a long time. You know, shout out to Chris and Ryan and Bill. Like, they get it. They understood a long time ago, teams are the way. So let's, let's, let's move away from teams for a second. Let's talk about, like, podcasting and content creation, right? You were, you know, you were... I would say on the earlier side of a lot of my, you know, besties that really picked up on, Hey, this is, this is going to be something. So, so give us maybe tell the audience, like, when did you start and what did you start with first before you got to the podcast? And then let's talk about the podcast. I started within my first year of real estate. Right. And so I had, uh, started in a market on the Connecticut shoreline that was really dominated by, you know, a few individuals, like almost any market when, when you're coming in as, as a new agent. And I knew I couldn't blend in with what they were doing, which yeah. was literally at that time, just continuing to post listings in the newspaper, which is as crazy as that yep. sounds, because it yeah. wasn't very nice. long ago, thinking back. And so I started a show on Facebook every single week. Actually, I was hanging out with some film guys in the area, really, uh, you know, a production company, really forward thinking Guys, they actually turned me on to Gary Vee. Yeah. And, and it was a keynote that he did at Remax before he like took off and, and became Gary Vee. He and I were, we shared the stage. I, rem I know the exact talk you're referring to. Yes. And I was like, whoa, this is really not just the way that it's going to be. This is the way that it is right yeah. now. I think the next week I started 
uh, you know, putting my podcast out there, but I committed to it every single week. If something's so, worth doing yeah. today, it's worth doing every single day. So, so I'm thinking back to that because I was in the green room when he was like, he went, I went, and then we hung out. Like, and it was, it was something to the effect of, and, and clarify this. It was like, you just need to be the digital mayor of your town. You need to understand you're all in the media business. It used to be print. It used to be direct mail. It used to be billboards. Now it's Facebook. Now it's Twitter and whatever else is next. It's all the same. These are just tools. And I'm watching, you know, cause you know, I got the camera angle in the green room of the audience's reaction. And I see a whole bunch of my peeps going, yeah, yeah, we got this from in 2009 with Gary Vee. Like, yeah, we got it. What did you hear that day that maybe the person that's listening right now needs to hear? What, what I heard was I'm going to be irrelevant if I don't take this step. I'm going to go backwards and you go see my call on my, uh, my talk on, on the Tom X stage a number I, of years ago at the summit, what I would go back to. I was coming out of bankruptcy, right? I was coming out of having my back against the wall. So if I want to fail in this business and have to go back to my wife and say, like, I don't know what to do now because I quit a six figure job just to get into real estate when unemployment was at its all time high and people thought I was absolutely crazy to do that. Yep. That was the alternative. Yeah. Right. And you, you argue all the time. You say, what is your alternative to not producing video? You're going to be irrelevant. Yep. And, but, you, the, but what I really got out of this, yeah. you have to do it consistently. Yeah. So how does, you know, so first of all, I want to just validate uh, Carrie McGee, my VP of marketing, uh, slid me something a couple of days ago when I was on stage and it was, um, we'll get the exact quote, we'll put it up on the website, but it was basically 81% of consumers are now making their decision on a product or service based upon the video that they watch. Let me, let me say it to you again for the people that are listening. 81% of consumers are now making decisions based upon a product or a service that they're going to hire or buy based upon the video they watch. And I remember 10 years ago saying to people, if I go to YouTube and, I, and you don't show up, you don't exist. If I go to your website today as an investor in you know, tens of companies, the first thing I look at is, okay, send me your website. Okay, cool, there's no video, pass. I literally pass on the investment just because there's no video on the website. It makes sense. And you invest in a lot of companies. So there's a lot of people missing out if they're not putting video up. So, so how does somebody, you know, look at, you've got a production company. So I want you to dummy it down and say, okay, like you didn't start out with a production company or may, or maybe you, you know, right. So, so there's someone listening right now. That's like, yeah, I know, but do I need all this stuff or can I just use my iPhone? No, you can definitely use your iPhone and you should, you should focus on lighting and audio quality well before you get any camera because really the camera stuff is it's not important at all look at what zachary loft is doing uh, i call him loft but it, it's faust uh he, he always yes. has loft on, on the back end yeah. of his of yeah. his uh, loft, TikTok loft and estate. yeah loft real estate down in delaware shout out to zachary but zach's doing most of his content on his phone and he really blew up on TikTok. 1.6 million on TikTok. i believe the most followed real estate agent on on TikTok. Yep. So, and I would, I, I leaned into podcasts heavily because I like long form conversation. I like clipping out short little clips, putting those on Instagram. That's my style. It makes me feel very comfortable. Yeah. I'm now starting to put on Instagram reels though, Tom. I'm watching. And my IG, all my content is getting much better engagement because I'm playing to the algorithm and because right. I'm actually just taking my phone and I'm doing the, all the editing and everything in the app, like the way they want it. The broke agent talk, Eric talks about this all the time. Yep. Like if you want to really get good on Instagram right now, get into the reels and edit inside the app. So I would start with whatever you're comfortable with, whether that's long form podcasts, whether that's five minute educational videos, Q and a take the 52 questions, the last 52 that you were asked in your email, start a Q and a show. There's 52 weeks of content right there for you. Or if you like Zach and you're really good at these short little 15, 30 second bursts on TikTok or on reels, start there, but do something consistently every single day. And if, and if you're really good at reels and TikTok, then start doing the podcast later. Once you've really gotten that down and you're doing it every single day or vice versa, yeah. but definitely start on the phone uh, and, and light. I mean, I walk around like this office doing my reels, there's plenty of good light here with, with the Florida sun. So it's pretty easy wherever yeah. you are too. There's going to be somewhere you can get. 
Yeah, or or the ring light that's sitting in front of me here, or the little mini ring light that I put on my laptop when I'm you know somewhere. So my, I have a ring at my house also, but you know sometimes I just want to chill in the living room, do a quick Zoom call, put on a little ring light, bam, I'm in the game. I I agree. Lighting and sound. Um, you you rattled off a couple of really good points, and I want to just I want to unpack a few of these for the people that are listening. Um, I remember sitting with my buddy Kirk Kessel, right? Huge shout out to Kirk, and. So I don't know what just happened there. We'll do a little, little edit because all of a sudden he vanished. All right. So, so shout out to my buddy Kirk and his partner, Dwayne. They were like, well, we don't even know what content to create. And I said, okay, guys, between the two of you, how long have you guys been in the real estate business? And they were like 62 years. I said, okay, great. Could you guys sit down and think about 62 lessons you've learned in selling houses in a combined 60 and like literally firing them like this. Got it right? They now had 62 weeks of content. They sat down together and just mapped out. I mean, it was everything. What are the disclosures? How does that work? What is title insurance? Why do we need it? Like everything you can imagine, but then getting into some very detailed stuff. Cause you look at 62 years of investing, fixing and flipping. They got through all that stuff. And the interesting part, like, cause Kirk's one of my closest friends on the planet. He said to me, it, we still compete at times on listing presentations. He's like, but the vast majority of the people are just like, come list my house. Like I've, I've seen everything you guys have answered every freaking question I've ever had. You clearly know exactly what you're talking about. List my house, right? Have you experienced some of that? Do you, do you, do you find it? Does it grease the grease the wheels or whatever the phrase is? Absolutely. And my, my first YouTube show, which was crappy, I was editing it myself. I was doing it on windows. I don't even know. Uh, what the, I got what the Tristan software dying was. laughing. Yeah, he's over definitely here. laughing. I mean, a guy like Tristan would just be, he's embarrassed for me. Um, <laughs> he is, he's nodding yes. But listen, I was getting absolutely no views, no traction mm -hmm. on YouTube, but I was, I was emailing it out. I was, you know, I was putting it out there on Facebook. I, I was doing whatever I could to organically get it. I wasn't running ads or anything like that. Yeah. The very first development I ever picked up was off of that YouTube show. And yeah. these, these sisters, uh, they sent the video to their brother who is a developer who had the same agent. His dad hired their agent Wow! and they had the same agent for over 20 years. And in fact, that agent sold 67 of the 76 homes in the development. There was nine left, but he hadn't sold one in over 12 or 15 months. So yeah. they were looking for a change even after 20 years, even if, after that relationship, because there was no creative marketing, yeah. there wasn't any, they didn't feel like they were getting the buyer of, of today. And so that got me a meeting on my first development, that video. And, and it was, you know, it was a one meeting deal. And I ended a 20 year relationship for the other agent. It can happen very quickly. You don't have to worry about followers or any of that stuff. You've got to worry about getting the message out there. So you actually have a chance to have a conversation. And then if you're working on your, your conversion skills with your coach or, or with your team, then you're going to have a chance to actually win the appointment. Yeah. I would, uh, I would ask everybody to think about um, sort of post our January elite. I asked one of our clients, Sarah, down in Miami to, to just share like in, in eight or nine minutes, like what's really working for you on Instagram? And you remember, she said, I did this thing called 30 questions in 30 days. And you know, Sarah's got a big personality. Shout out to Sarah if you're listening, right? So I have now seen I, just, just in people that are tagging me, I would say north of a thousand agents that have now taken on answering 30 questions in 30 days just by grabbing their phone, going on Instagram and saying, hey guys, one of the questions I get all the time is, you know, why are there so many offers right now on a house that's under 500,000? Well, let me explain. And people are like freaking out how much, how many views they're getting. Cause they're, they're actually, for everyone listening right now, if you're in Canada, 48% of the GDP of Canada is housing. Let me say that to you again, guys. Almost 50% of all the revenue in Canada is housing. It's bonkers. If you're in the US, it's 17 or 18% and everybody has an opinion and a thought and an emotion about housing. It may not be the right moment for them today, but if you're answering these questions and you're being relevant to that person, like it's like you're going to you're going to get into their DMs. You're going to get into their mind share. You're going to be on the consideration set. So I challenge all of you to do it, but what else would you, before we switch gears, cause we got a lot of stuff to cover. We've only done two. I want to play, I want to just tie off of that real quick here. 
it, and as you do this, you've got to do it consistently as you yeah. do it every single day, week, yep. month, yep. you're now going to be able to point your content in the direction that your business is headed. Mm -hmm. If you go on my Instagram right now, you're going to see over the last two months, all of my content is pointed towards new agents. How do you be successful in this business, right? right. Because we're in a massive recruiting, recruiting. push yep. with our team. So I'm talking about helping your business, uh, what you should be doing once you get your license in your first year in, in the business, in your first two years in the business. And what do you know, Tom? Recruiting has become a lot more easier over the last two months because I'm talking about it consistently and they see right. that on Instagram and LinkedIn and all these different places. And, and for everybody listening, you might say, well, I'm not recruiting. Well, great. Then what you need to be talking about is how to sell your home and only move once, how to get the highest possible price. And if you're talking to an agent that doesn't have six different ways to keep you in your house, get you all your cash and get you into the next house in one move, then we should talk like that kind of content right now is, and I want to stress to everybody and Byron, you know, give me your thoughts on this. You said it earlier. It doesn't matter how many views you're getting. And I would say 1000% yes, because remember everyone that's listening, if you, if you get 300 views on a video on Instagram, ask yourself, how long would it take you to call 300 people? How many, how long would it take you to knock on the doors of 300 people to actually be able to say, hi, my name is Byron and I sell real estate. And, and even if they hang up, how long would that take you versus the 60 seconds you went live or the, you know, the one minute video that you shot. So don't be attached. Think about it as purely a way to scale your brand. Every That's long, yeah. Every long form video we're doing should be a, there should be a 15 second version. Not now. I always used to say clip it out and right. post it on Instagram. No, 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 no. Take that long form video and do a 15, 30 second version of the bullet points on reels. And then you're right. going to feel really good about the views on reels because maybe it gets 15 oh, yeah. views on YouTube. And right. what do you know, it'll get you 1500 on Instagram exactly. reels if you position it correctly. So you can feel good there and yep. you can reach more people. Every single piece of content, like the 62 lessons that you're talking about with Kirk. Yep. I'm turning all 60 of those, 62 of those into reels. Big time, big time. Everybody just needs to pay attention. Um, you know, this, this goes back to, you know, when, uh, so some pals at Facebook were like, look, dude, we're going to send you this little app. And I forget the name of the app, but it was like, it was predating going Facebook live. Right. So it was the creators app. Gary got it. I got it. And I'm like, wait a minute. You mean if I hit this button, I can go live and talk to like 80,000 people. I'm like, first of all, I actually was honestly very intimidated. Like, oh man, I can't screw this up. You know what I mean? And then I was like, screw it. Bam. Hit the live button. And I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. You kind of do that I'm for like, a living. Say again. I said, you kind of do that for a living. You know, I, I know, but he, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just being very transparent with the, you know, the audience. Like even I was freaked out in the beginning and now like if I don't go live on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or something like a couple times a week, I feel like I'm missing some of my closest friends. I'm not able to like, I see so many of the same people that are just like, Whoa, what's up fairy. How's it going? Like it's, it's listen, Seth Godin says your vibe attracts your tribe. You go live, you attract your tribe. And listen, your people would look, I don't know how many IG followers you have, but it's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of followers. And some people just want to get to a certain number so that they can mail it in. No, you're still doing the hard work right. on social, which is going live consistently so that yep. you can actually get in everybody's feed organically, right? right? right. You kind of re-jerk the algorithm every time you do that, or every time yep. you post a reel, because there's a lot of organic push behind that. You've got it. There's so, there's way too many. And listen, we've got a media company and we're trying to help people, you know, outsource some of their problems, but there's way too many team leaders not willing to do this themselves. I post, I have a media company and I post 100% of my Instagram content, a hundred percent of it. Yep. It yep. is too many of uh, leaders. And I'm, you know, listen, sometimes I think I'm too busy too, and I'm really not. There's too many of us saying, I, I, I need to outsource. I don't have time for this. Right. No, 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 you have to make time for this. Yeah. Yeah. I say everybody's got time, you know, in your car on the way to an appointment after you close your laptop after a zoom session, you know, like it's just an excuse. All right. Let's, let's move away from that. Let's talk about marketing that works. So, so you have gone through quite an evolution of 
how you're marketing yourself, how you're attracting clients. Um, if I said to you, like high level, how many lead sources do you have that produce more than 10 transactions today? Could you, could you just kind of like from memory walk us through like, I do, you know, obviously my past clients in Sphere, obviously Zillow. Like it's definitely double digits. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're yeah. a Zillow growth partnership. We have our Google ads we're running. We, we've got the Google service, uh, you know, the local service leads. So those are two different lead yep. sources there. Yep. Uh, why Lopo with, with Facebook retargeting happening, uh, our own internal Facebook leads, uh, obviously sphere sphere is still a huge part of our of business because it, because the amount of, and I argue that content really infuses that, um, open houses. We're still doing open houses right now, safely, in, you know, in Connecticut, pretty consistently, our new development brings us a ton of leads. Uh, so yeah, we're, uh, over 10 for sure. If I run down the all right. Of them. So, so if you were listening to somebody else, I'm going to go back to the, the stuck scaling conversation, right? So any, anybody in either one of those groups, what they all want is more listings, right? Everybody wants more listings. Everyone in their right mind should always want more listings as long as they're in this business. Now you and I both know with Zillow growth or realtor VIP or home light or, you know, uh, Quicken Loans, Rocket, like, like there's so many channels now that are providing explosive growth for agents. Beyond that stuff, talk to us about what's working right now to win the yeah, listing. Like I've to, got an easy to listing one appointment. Oh, to, to get the listing appointment. Yeah, I've got a really easy one. Everybody should be circle prospecting right now. Everybody's got so many buyers and, and, and nowhere <laughs> Hold on, to dude. place them. Hold on, hold on. Mr. Technology, Mr. Media Company said circle prospecting. That's like 1962. I love it, but we know what works. Yeah, it's setting the most listing appointments for us right now from new agents to experienced agents. Yep. Uh, we, had, we had an agent the other day on the dialer. Shout out to Emily. She uh, had four listing appointments on one session on the dialer just with a really simple script. Hey, this is Emily over with one company at William Ravis. Uh, I'm working with dozens of buyers right now. In fact, a couple of them made offers in your neighborhood. I don't know if you know about 123 Main Street that was on the market. Now it isn't. Just curious if you know of any of your neighbors who are thinking about selling their home in the coming weeks where I could introduce them to my buyers, right? Just a simple script. And right. what is she doing? She's uncovering the people that are saying, well, well that's me. I'm actually thinking about, yep. she's, she's finding the needles in the haystack because she's calling the entire neighborhood over and over and over again. Now, what is she also doing? She's providing huge value to her buyers, which is really tough to do in this market with, with right. low inventory. She's out there working, doing the hard work for the buyers, mm -hmm. and she's adding value to her community because she's providing information to the sellers. She's untapping inventory you know, sooner in the process. They're thinking summer and spring, yep. which is historically, you know, like in Connecticut, she's in Connecticut, historically, when you should be uh, putting your property on the market. No, you should be doing it right now. I think we're at the tip of the iceberg in, in that market, but that's a whole different conversation. So circle prospecting, I'd take it the next level though. I would go ahead and go live from that neighborhood and I would, st and I would not start with this is Byron. I'm going to go live. I would start with, I'm working with Mr. and Mrs. Jones. They've made three offers in this two mile radius. They've lost all the offers because of this. Then I'd say I'm Byron Lazine. Yeah. Then I'd get into their story. Here's the three problems they're having. Here's the three solutions we've come up with. Share this video with somebody who can help them share this video with somebody in a similar experience. And I love that. And I'm assuming you would, you would literally be like, I'm sitting here in Irvine Terrace in Corona del Mar. Right, you're gonna name like the community, the city. So people are like, oh, that guy's down the street from me. He's talking to me directly. And, and by the way, if you guys didn't pick up on that little insight about say what you're doing before you introduce yourself is key because they may only get three seconds. And at least in the three seconds that you're gonna be in that person's newsfeed, they're actually gonna know what it is that you're doing versus who you are. There's always a place though for who you are. Hey, it's Byron with one and company at William Ravis. There's always room for that. But in this specific hack, that was brilliant. So circle dialing, going live in this specific community. What else is getting listings? Uh, what else is getting listings? So all the channel accounts that everybody has, you know, people that do have channel accounts, 
If you're Can asking you find me, channel accounts, I know yes. what you're referring to, but if someone's going to be Zillow, like channel, if you're a Zillow growth partner, or if you're getting leads from realtor or, or if you're getting leads from home light or any of these places, a lot of them are coming in on, well, home light's going to come in on, on the sell side. So that was a bad example, but the ones that are buyer heavy, yeah, they have questions about properties, but oftentimes they have another property, whether that's out of your location, you can pick up a referral fee right. or it's something right in the, the market that you service. If you're asking the right questions and getting in front of them and showcasing the value, there's, there's opportunities there for sure. Uh, Google, getting Google screened is an obvious at this point. You know, yeah. getting, your, getting your Google reviews up. And that was another thing Lisa really kicked my butt on uh, last year. Tom, in December, my team, yeah, December 1st of 2020, we had zero Google reviews. What? But you had hundreds and hundreds on, on Zillow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundreds, on, hundreds and hundreds on Zillow. And so I'm, I've been harping this for a while. Please, please tell people why beyond Lisa just kicking your ass. Why did you switch and start getting more and more reviews? Even though you're a channel partner with Zillow, why are you now pumping Google as hard? Because my Zillow business got way too high. It made me very uncomfortable how high it got. It went up to 28% of our business in yep. 2020 for yep. closed transactions. Sphere was still pretty close to 50%. Yep. And you know, that wraps into content and all of that. But boy, and I listen, I'm I, I really I'm happy with my Zillow growth partnership, but I, I'm not happy with it being over a quarter of my business. Okay. So that was a clear indicator to me that okay, Zillow built their business on Google. Google's the number one search engine in any right. market that you're sitting in, whoever's listening to this right now. Google's the number one search engine. YouTube, by the way, is number two. I need to have a stronger presence there. And so now we have over a hundred reviews. We got our butts into gear in December, made it a priority to come out of that month with over a hundred reviews. In our market, we've got more than any broker, more than any team, more than any individual agent. And we clean that up in 30 days or less. So for everyone listening out there, the one thing I'd ask you, so first of all, I've been, I've been harping on this. I went live on, uh, on Facebook or, or Instagram and literally one of the guys from Zillow called me like, Hey man, what do, you, what do you mean? I'm like, Hey, listen, dude, I love you guys, but let's be very clear. An agent today that doesn't have a Google business page isn't in business, right? Like you're, you're just, it's, it's free. Just if you don't know how type into Google, how do I build a Google business page? And a link will pop up and you'll add a photo and you're in the game. The second thing I said on that live was you gotta go hard on Google reviews because if everything is on one site, like everything else, if you put all your eggs in one basket, you're putting your business at risk. You gotta dig that deeper moat around your castle with multiple sharks and multiple alligators that can fight off these, you know, these people coming after you and Google reviews are obvious. And you know, one of the things that, that I've learned about myself, especially in the last 12 months, is you're, you've been talking about this for a long time. I never took action on it. I'll sit there at events and I'll, and I'll, and I'll, hear, I all, I'll hear all the different things yeah. that I should be doing in my business. It wasn't until what I said earlier on the podcast, it wasn't until I really got serious about how many layers of accountability I'm going to put on top of the information that I'm getting from you, mostly throughout the ecosystem that you've created. So that when the next time I go to an event, my speed to getting the stuff done that I hear at, you know, like team plus or, or whatever the next event, I think team plus will be the next one. Finally, hopefully I'm, I'm yes. counting on us being able to do it something may. here. It soon. May. I promise. There, there we go. Uh, I'm going to be able to take action a whole lot right. quicker. So right. same thing if, when we're talking about getting stuck on, on social, right? What's your accountability in my accountability group for me to post my stuff on Instagram and LinkedIn. Cause I'm posting it personally. I have a deadline of seven posts before 8 30 AM East coast time. And I've got to text the group, the screenshots of that. It has to get done. Yeah. yeah. You've got to get this stuff done. You can't, it can't sit in your, in your TF notebook for years and years and years untapped. And so that's been that really just a, for me last we're doing months. shameless self-promotion on the Tom Ferry level 10, no apologies journal. <laughs> I love it. So we talked about, we talked about marketing. We talked about teams. We talked about a little bit on the future of real estate, kind of where we think it's going. We certainly talked about podcast and, and content creation. Um, talk to us just kind of high level. 
if, if someone's listening to this today and they're like, okay, I want to scale, I want to get better. What's the tech stack that you recommend? I mean, you, you know, you know, so many in our community, uh, our ecosystem, like you guys are testing and tweaking and trying everything. And we know most of the founders. So like you guys got better access to, you know, kind of get this stuff hacked and working for you. What's working today on transaction management, on project management, on CRM, on, uh, you know, Google, Google retargeting. We talked kind of through Y Lopo, SMS, email, like give us just some insight on, on the tech you use. Yes. Uh, one, which I know you, you're, you were an investor in is Slack. Yep. Yep. I mean, our culture on Slack, yeah, Slack. Is, in, is incredible. It, it, you know, I still don't have with where I'm sitting today. I have sales trainer. I have an operations manager. I yep. still don't have like a true manager that is doing a lot of the deal doctoring, yeah. a lot of the deal doctoring and, and a lot of stuff can still kind of float up to me if it gets, if it gets sticky, obviously, but a lot of the deal doctoring is happening right in Slack. We're right. active on Slack every single right. day. It's a great resource. So uh, certainly internal messaging Slack w- would be my go-to there. But, but Slack, remember like for everybody listening, Slack has over a thousand different applications you can add to it. So, so my team Slack is Slack is, it hasn't replaced email, which was my intention, but it's getting really close for everybody listening to that. It hasn't replaced email and that is my intention, but it's getting real close. And I think if if it replaces 40% of your email in the first six months, you're using it, that's a realistic goal. And I I think that can, you know, you can build from there. Uh, We're using follow up boss for our CRM. Why I like follow up boss is because. And I, I love all my people at, at some of the different CRMs. So I, I yeah, want to make that clear. Um, know a lot of, you know, we know a lot of the same people, obviously. What I like about follow-up boss is they're not trying to be a website and a CRM. Yeah. They're the sales force of real estate, in my opinion. Right. Right. So you can, you can still keep other CRMs because you like the website and you can yep. just keep stacking these on top of follow-up boss and you could have competing websites in your marketplace because you're not just stuck to one. And if one website isn't working for you or isn't innovating anymore, you can just get rid of it and not feel like you've got to retrain yourself and your agents because you're yeah. trained on follow up boss and all of the leads are, are flowing into there. We had a, we had a, we have a mega monthly meeting. We just had ours the first week of, of this month. And I said, we need our follow up boss. We need to be as accountable to that as we are to our Zillow CRM. Yeah. Follow up boss needs to become our Zillow CRM eternal internally. Yeah. And we need to be debted to it like hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the, that's the future of our business is really getting sophisticated in all of the, you know, in how we are accounting for it. We've, we've hired v, VAs to kind of help the agents because there's sure. so much tracking that they're required to do and right. they're getting so many leads. Yeah. Uh, so I really like follow up boss. Uh, email. We love bomb bomb. You know, all of, all sure. of our agents ha- have a bomb bomb account. Um, yep. well, I would say that the ones that are living up to the standard of 30 bomb bombs a month, with, yes. which is a really low standard have, yes. have their bomb bomb turned on. Uh, we're, we're even running a lot of, you know, sign up forms through bomb bomb. So there's other things you can do through bomb bomb besides just right. the video messaging. We're, we're right. doing new- newsletters and, uh, stuff like that through, through bomb bomb. Um, what else do we, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. Sisu, Sisu is where we're tracking, Sisu, right? Yeah. Tracking. Yeah. You know, uh, that's been a game changer for me because yeah, for like, for me, I like looking at the numbers and, and being able to refresh it every single day, as opposed to yep. digging through, you yep. know, what we were on Google sheets before Google sheets is still, you know, don't go out and just start spending money. If Google sheets is working for you right now sure. and, and it's not an investment you have to make, go, hey, go ahead and keep Google, doing that. Google sheets, Excel spreadsheet. Just not, just not yellow notepad when we're talking about the level of analytics that we want to be able to look at in our business and you know, the leading and lagging indicators. What's our future revenue? How are we doing per lead source? I mean, it's yeah. Brian, who's a, is a pal, like the CEO and founder of that company, like they're spot on, but they're very te- for everyone listening. They're very team focused, right? They don't really, they don't really apply to a solo agent. Um, unless you, you have like my client Shauna, you have five assistants and you're doing 80 transactions and you've got multiple pillars of lead generation, then it applies. But the solo agent listening, don't look at CSU. No, no, probably stay in sheets or CTR is cheap. You could could go there, but right. 
Uh, what about project man? What about project management? How do you guys? I mean, you've got you're an idea machine, right? But we know it's all about you know like the old school method that I taught you guys a hundred years ago: do, doing, and done, which is what Walt Disney and Mike Vance and all those guys used. What what project management, if anything, are you guys using now? RE3 Media is using Monday.com. They yep. love it. Uh, yep. I just kind of see reports on it sure. you know, twice a week. And then we have uh, Sprout Social over there for, for social management. Yep. Project management on the operation side. I mean, honestly, I'll go back to Slack, really, because sure. sure. everything is communicated through there on the op side uh, of the real estate business. Um. There's probably something I'm forgetting, and Carolina, my ops manager, would be like, "How did you forget that?" But right. <laughs> I'm sure there is something else. Yeah. Calendly, Calendly is a big one that I'm in all the time because for our recruiting fund, we have three separate, you know, interview process. Calendly is a big part of that. If you're an individual agent, mm -hmm. guaranteeing your communication to your seller through Calendly every single week, you're going to get an email. You're going to have the opportunity to schedule a call with me every single week. If you don't get that email, you can fire me on the spot. That's my communication guarantee to you. Yeah, that can be a really good resource for you. And so, easy so and free just really tool fast for everybody, Calendly is an auto scheduling app that you basically say, I am free at all of these times. If a buyer or a seller or somebody wants to communicate with me, they can just schedule a meeting. Think of it the way you do today. Like when I go get my haircut, I don't call there and say, you know, hey, is Phil ready at three o'clock? No, I go on the app, Phil's ready at three o'clock. I book my appointment. It's automatically put in my calendar. That's what Calendly does. And I just got to make a public statement. I didn't invest in that company and I'm pissed. It's, yes, it's such a great company. Let me tell you one that you, you all should look at, Transactly. Transactly. Speaking of another funny name company. Well, uh, we're using Skyslope. Is, is this something similar to Skyslope? It or? is. It is. Okay. Uh, Skyslope, Transactly. There's a, there's a few of these companies that do for individual agents, beautiful transaction management, think closing services, right? Managing the, you know, not the emotion of your client, but the process of the closing. Uh, what I like about what they've done is they've created free software for everybody. Then they say, and would you like a virtual assistant to do your transaction management for you, saving you 11 hours on average? And they can outsource. They've got you know hundreds of VAs right around the world that can do the transactions. So big shout out to Brian and the guys at Transactly. I would also say to everybody on project management, Trello. Trello is a game changer. And I would say to everybody out there, and, and you know, you you give me your opinion. I mean, you're using Monday. Monday, Asana, and Trello are all very similar. They're all great. It's like it's like when people say to me, like, you know, what CRM should I should I pick? I'm like, well, how did you pick your car, right? I mean, like, there's there's a thousand SKUs, right? You got to just find the one that's right for you, right? Absolutely, yeah. And we've used Trello in, in the past, but uh, here's one I'm looking into. This isn't on the transaction side. I don't yeah, know if you've looked me. into this at all. It's Real Scout. I'm an investor in Real Scout. <laughs> we we could there could be a drinking game called what company is Tom Ferry invested in in real estate? Yes, uh, real okay. So t so talk about Real Scout. Yeah. So Kevin got me on a call uh, recently. Kevin Kevin was over at Planomatic for a number of years. We've had a relationship yep. over over the years, and um, I don't know Andrew as well, but he's yeah. he's the CEO there. Yep. So Real Scout will allow, and I, I haven't gone there yet with my team because they'll, they'll probably kill me if I add another thing right now at this moment, but I'm, I'm thinking about doing it. Um, Real Scout will allow you to see how many buyers are in that market. So talk about the ability to win right. when you're at the listing appointment. Right. And, and the way I'm looking at this, because they're going after the big brokers, yep. it's almost going to have, it's going to become the cost of entry at the listing appointment. I said this again, I'm like, dude, you're, you're forcing me to get this basically because you're going to go out and get all these big brokers and everybody's going to have it. And we're not going to have that piece of information right. and right. Then we're not going to have that data for them. Yeah. And then we're not going to get the listing because we don't have the data. Uh, it also is going to, and their big, you know, the big part of it is it's going to send uh, instead of the MLS search, it's going to send the, the properties to the buyers, to the right. leads that you're working with in a very beautiful way that looks like it's written from you, yeah. AI software, lining up the right properties, in a real shareable way format for them. Uh, and I think it keeps people locked into you a little bit easier than, you right. know, if they're connected to 10 different agents because they signed up to 10 different things. It's also just, it's better and more beautiful than just the standard MLS search, right? Like just, I'm going to put you on, I'm going to put you on an MLS search and we'll just send you everything. And you're like, first of all, most MLS, you look at it and you're like, 
is this like Microsoft 1987, right? Like the UI and UX is horrible. So Real Scout, huge shout out there. Um, I'll, I'll throw one to you. And of course now everybody's going to listen to it also. So I work with a lot of CEOs, right? So, you know, you know, whether it's Bill or Gino or Dan, who's, you know, running Georgia, uh, you know, the Rands, like just these, these killer, killer, smart, savvy men and women running these big brokerages. The thing I'm hot on right now is a company called Lala point. It's really only for brokerages, Lala point. So here's what they do, Byron. They'll take basically your MLS data, like through like Pat Veeling, if you guys know uh, Pat Veeling, Real, Real Data Solutions, and they'll say, here's basically where you're number one, right? The best at anything you could be the best at in real estate, in every zip code or every community in your marketplace. And they'll take that data for you and create beautiful content expressing how successful you guys are in that marketplace. It's bonkers. It's absolutely bonkers. And it's blowing up. It's more of a broker play, but... If you think about something like, you know, uh, George Lofton, my client in Arizona who's did 3,100 transactions last year, not a broker. If he could basically show visually in a beautiful way, in a very thoughtful way that they're the market leader in all these different spots, that's going to be powerful. Check it out. La la point. Yeah. And the more, the more data that we can be a first mover on, which is why even though my team will kill me, I'm going to probably go into Real Scout sooner than later because right, right. our ability to have solutions for the yes. consumer right now is yes. paramount. And not a, not an investor in Lala Point, but Heidi Hockenberry, if you're listening to this, call me. Call me, girl power. So, so we talked a lot about tech. We talked a lot about your team. We talked a lot about some of the ins and outs. I love this sort of just, you know, I wrote down a few thoughts, but I knew, you know, you and I could probably do five hours of just, you know, banter back and forth and, you know, People are going to find moments of that fascinating and entertaining and other parts. I'll be like, oh, I'll come back to that later. Let's talk about real estate of the future. You started earlier by saying it's the end of the solo agent. We kind of went back and forth on that. Go a different direction. From a, from a consumer standpoint, how do you think the expectations are going to change? Not just with a real estate agent, but with the future of buying and selling houses. Like what, what's your 10 years out, 20 years out? Where do you see the world? I do see it similar to what, what Zillow has said for a while here is there's going to be more transactions. There's going to be more moving around. Right. Now, if you look at uh, Ivy Zellman talking about the people locking into these very low interest rates, they're not going right. to be motivated to move around. But I'd also argue that they're going to get sick of that home and they're going to turn that into a rental. I think you're going to see more people trying to become landlords over the next 10 years. I just think real estate over the last 12 months has become so top of mind for people. Yes. And when you're when you're looking at what's happening with NFTs or uh, right. you know, all these different like NFTs are an endless supply. And I yes. agree there, there's a market there. And like Gary V says, 97% of these are gonna fail. That's absolutely true. I would say it's yep. probably 99% of them are gonna fail. Real estate doesn't have an endless supply. No. No. People are worried about the dollar. They don't know if Bitcoin's the right investment. Real estate's going to become more and more attractive over the next 10 years. Yeah. So consumers are going to be seeking more information. They're going to be very thirsty to absorb as much real estate information as they possibly can. So flipping it over to what we need to do as agents, we need to be the providers of that information. Yes. At such, at such a deep, nuanced level that, uh, it, you know, it'd be interesting, like you look at companies like Quora and, and what they were able to do. And then can you imagine if like there was a combination of like Quora meets YouTube where the gateway to get in is you have to answer a hundred very thoughtful questions about your market, your business, you know, real estate, housing, what's going on. I think it'd just be fascinating. Like, I don't know, just, just kind of brainstorming out here for people wondering where I'm going with that. Um, Cora is really interesting to me. Like, so, so would be like the Connecticut real estate wiki. Like, I think if you built that, that would be gonzo. That would sell for a lot of money. There, there would be a lot of brokers very upset that they didn't think of that first. 
That could be, hey, Lisa Chinati, if you're listening, you should do that also in Boston. And then please kick Byron in the butt to make sure he gets it done. But think about that, right? The Connecticut Real Estate Wiki would be, it would, it would essentially become the source of information, right? Everything would be there. And if you allowed others as a, a true Wiki fashion, everyone else to contribute to it, yowzer. Right, right. I don't know if we should have actually shared that on the podcast, Brian, just saying. <laughs> well, we'll hey, yes, yes. Tristan, let's, let's make sure we give him at least a week before we put this out. <laughs> yeah, no, g- give me at least a week, Tristan, please. I, I don't yes. know that I'll get there, but. What else? What else on the future of real estate and how does an agent bridge the gap? Like how do they make sure they're aligned with the consumer and where things are going? Certainly being able to do this easier and being able to, you know, get um, as much of the prep work done digitally as possible. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that think, oh, people are just never going to be looking at homes anymore. That's crazy to me. No way. There's just no chance. Right. Um, I I mean, I just, I just bought a, an upgrade here in, in Naples and I knew exactly the area I wanted to be in. Uh, I knew exactly the floor plans I was looking at in these communities. I still had to get inside of those to know which right. one was the right. I scored a great deal, even in this yeah. market, which is crazy, a few months back rather. But I had to get inside the property to realize, oh, I see what's going on here. The agent used, actually, they did stage it and it was really outdated furniture. <laughs> they took dark photos. <laughs> they didn't highlight the water view. I was like, okay in 2021 or 2020 like it's nuts it's still happening of course which is crazy and and so you've got to get inside of these properties uh just you know cleanliness like if you're moving right in you you can't pick up cleanliness on some of these photos and the and these 3d tours but you you can you can't pick up on the smell of cats no Right. You, can't, you can't pick up on that. No. But, but is there, we, we're talking walkthroughs of properties a lot. When is there going to be an opportunity to walk through the community, the amenities, the yeah. HOA, the neighborhood, the local shops? That's a, that's a big one over the next 10 years that I think digitally, it, somebody's going to, to figure that one out. Uh, so, so, that, so, so that if you're relocating to a new area. Right. But let's, okay. So look at, you know, you and I've been doing this for a long time. I go back to like Christoph Chu and one of the most successful uh, video series that he did was drive through tours of neighborhoods. He gets big shots of Christoph. He gets like a come list me call every month from like, Hey, I watch your video on Beverly Hills flats. And you know, clearly, you know, everything about it. Then I just for fun, I also watched Bel Air estates and I, you know, like, he just, he just drives through these communities guys with his phone. And I'm sure it's something better now, like a, a camera just glued to the front and he just drives through and just tells you, Hey, uh, you know, Chuck Norris lives here and this is, you know, this person's house and this is what built and this is who the builder was. And this is how long, and this is where it showed up and blah. blah. And basically he knows, he knows the market inside and out. I mean, like that's the real estate wiki on video. So when are you going to do, when are you going to walk? every street in your marketplace you or someone and narrate video for every restaurant every shop every building every school i got another guy you, do you know dan blackwell my client the commercial real yeah estate i guy? love dan i mean we we hung, we hung out at uh at your place a while back i right. love dan right dan dan had a mission to he was going to go he's a multifamily broker for everybody listening dan blackwell check him out on on instagram or youtube his rent report during covid forget it. It was bonkers. It blew up, but he's going to do it. He's like, I'm going to film every building, multifamily building in Southern California and have it on my page. He's doing commercial real estate and his video presence and his delivery is yes. fantastic. Yes. Everybody should go follow Dan on, yeah. on Instagram. Yeah. I, if you're, you know, want to follow multifamily and how it should be done. Absolutely. Right. Dan. Right. Big yeah, and I, I agree with you. Every single agent, including our team, should be recording more of our community because eventually there's going to be a video game style where people don't have to watch your videos about the community. They're just going to be able to walk around right. EXP style all of these communities and check them out and like walk into the digital store, right? Like all yeah. that's coming. And I, you know, I don't know if that's, that's 10 or 15 years, but that's coming. Yeah. One could argue it's here. We just haven't, you know, 
like I, I bought my Oculus, what, like three, four years, five years ago, five years ago. I mean, you know, you can only play so many Star Wars games with your kids, right? Tristan, yes, I get to level two in case you're wondering. The force runs strong in my family. But, but that, is, that is, to me, a big part of the future of real estate. You're going to put on some device. You're going to walk into some office. You know, you're going to be sitting in your home and you're just going to close your eyes and boom, you're walking through the house. So future is kind of exciting, man. Do you think there's a more exciting time than right now to be in this business? No. And, I, and if, if you're listening to this podcast and you're not in this business, I'd say get into it right now because when, well, why the market's so good, there's so there's 1.5 million agents when the market does pull back and all the part-timers get out, you're now going to be the experienced agent because right. you got in right now. Your ability to build a network right now is greater than it's ever been at any point because there's more people interested in real estate today than ever before. Do it right now. Mic drop. He's going to cut that out and put it on his recruiting uh, platform. Yes, guarantee. thank you. Thank, thank you for that. <laughs> Tristan, send me right. the file. So, uh, so Tristan's giving me the heads up. You got a live show in a little bit. Uh, B money. We could do this all day. I can't wait to, uh, to see you face to face. I am just so proud of you, man. Even from, you know, the, the Tom X talk you mentioned where you just revealed you, you were so transparent with the audience that like someone that's listening right now and you're thinking like this guy, like how can I compete with that guy? Like he's got it all going on. Byron is just like every other human being I talk to. Everybody's got a backstory. Everybody had lots of bumps, lots of challenges, lots of lessons, AKA failures, my friends. And that, and then you know what you actually get a little wisdom, a little wisdom. And my friend, you are very wise. I'm super super proud, proud of you. I, I appreciate the relationship we have and the ecosystem you've built. It's allowed me to get a little bit better every day. It's, it's been critical in the last 12 months to continue to grow with everything surrounding us. Right. And so I appreciate you, my friend. I'm, and uh, I'm just honored to be back on, on the podcast. Thank you. Super great. So make sure you follow him everywhere on social and uh, can't wait to see the comments, you know, share this with a few of your friends in the business, share it with your 18 year old kid. Who's, you know, smoking weed and, living in your basement and you wish that they would go to college or do something, maybe just maybe this could inspire them to say, Hey, you know what, mom, you know what, dad, you're right. I'm going to get into real estate. This could be very cool. So thank you guys so much. Appreciate you always be money. I'll see you soon. All right. We're out. Thanks for listening to the podcast.